What's up, you? For today's video, with a full best Pokemon Synergy team. Six years ago, I did this team, and I'm thinking it's time for a revamp. Many people have been asking me over the years to give it another go, and now with Earth Eater in the game, I thought, you know what? Let's try it with some different Pokemon and see what happens. So the whole idea here is to actually go for the ability swapping on the Pokemon, so to see if I can activate them over and over again. First battle here, this one is on the Poker Portal. Uh, this is a battle against March Marcelo, and we've got a Iron Treads lead. I've got four battles in today's video. If you want to support the series and the channel, make sure you hit that like button, and let's get into it. Now, I've been up for nearly 24 hours, people, so if I say anything silly in my narration, well, you know that everything is normal. So I've got my Typhlosion lead here. This Typhlosion I've got as a Flash Fire Pokemon. So more on that set a little bit later. I'm going to be going into Orthorn because I smell a ground type move a mile away. So Earth Eater is going to activate. Earth Eater is the new ground type move. And obviously that gives you a quarter of your health healing when hit by a ground move and ground immunity. So very, very good. I guess this is sort of like the, uh, I guess even the buff to like levitate, right? Swing comes are walking meme there and I'm going to be going for a Earth Power. This is a special war form. So I've got Steel Beam, Earth Power, Terra Blast, Fire, and I've got Shed Tail, Max Health and Max Special Attack modest nature so pretty cool so i'm gonna go back into the typhlosion there to get the flash fire because i knew they'd go for it there bringing in orthorb then i went into vapor to get a water absorb i was like this is awesome so i'm getting some very nice synergy going the only problem about these battles that were very very long like something else right because i had to keep swapping them in swap there's so many swaps to get these abilities to activate so Pretty much here, I was just trying to annoy the opponent, right? So let, let, let's just be real about it. Anyway, so I've got this physical vapor. Now, surprisingly, it did pretty well. So we got our old Rotom Watch coming in here. I've got that physical vapor. I know they're going to go for electric type moves. So I went into Pachirisu. This Pachirisu was a bulky set. So I've got Max Health, Max Speed, Super Fang, Sweet Kiss, Nuzzle, and Charge Beam. Bright Powder as the item, and of course, a Volt Absorb as the ability. Volt Absorb is going to be healing me for a quarter health every time I get hit by Electric Type move and Electric Immunity. So back in the Vapor right now, because, man, this Rotom, I played them like a fiddle. Now, we've got Trailblaze, Waterfall, Bite, and Terra Blast Ground. Leechy Berry as the item, and Water Absorb. I've got Max Attack and Max Speed Adam and Nature. So with my Terra Blast, I did a couple, sorry, my Terrors. I actually did a couple of clever Terrors so I could get my abilities to activate as well. You get to see that soon. So I'm back in a pit church in there on the Rotom. I mean, at this stage, that Rotom's getting sick of doing nothing. And this pit church in was a Hydro Pump Thunder from Down Under. Venno Shock and Hex Set and a Lightning Roller's ability, boosting the special attack by one. And I've got a Salt Vest as the item, Max Health and Max Special Attack. So now we're going to go into Go Goat there. Man, Go Goat Shiny is looking pretty fresh. We've got the Breloom coming in here, and that is going to give me a Sap. Sipper there. So Sap Sipper is a really cool move there. Uh, when you get hit by a grass type move, it not only gives you immunity, it also boosts your attack by one stage. So I've got milk drink. I guess it I, I guess it's it drinks its own milk, like goat's milk. Uh, we've got I like goat's cheese, but I've never had goat's milk before. Like how has anyone had goat's milk before? Does that like taste any different to like I, I guess cow's milk? Or like I wonder what the difference is. Like let me know. Uh, anyway, uh, I've got horn leech bulk up and earthquake. I've got the big root as the item, which is going to stack nicely with Horn Leech. So Horn Leech gives a 50% recovery on the damage gel, plus the big root, which gives an additional 1.3 times. The EV spread on this one is Max Health and Max Special Defense Careful Nature. So this is definitely the best set on my team. And I've been running this Go Goat set for 69 years. As soon as Go Goat came into the game, uh, this is virtually the set that I run with. It's very, very good and works pretty well across the board. So now it's quite funny when you look up the top. Look at all the Pokemon so far that have been revealed, but 
none of them are fainted yet. It's pretty funny. So I guess that has uh, like amounted to all my swapping and swapping and swapping. So when it comes to the, uh, the Rotom there, I'm going to uh, hang it out to dry with those big old shiny horns. And that is the end of Rotom Wash. I got some nice juicy stuff there with the Horn Leech and the Big Roots. Nothing like a Big Root here and there. Now the next Pokemon, what does this Pokemon's name even mean? Does that say... Uh, um, Acupressure? I'm not sure what it says. i got to say that name again. Anyway, we got a Terra here, and it's going to be uh, Terra Gogo, because I've got Terra Water on this one. Just for a little bit of surprise here, I thought it would be a cool thing to go for. So, how do I say this name? I'm going to try and say it. So, I've got Horn Leech here. Now, the reason why I ran Water on this, because obviously it draws out Fire-type moves, and I thought it might be funny if I go for a Terra Water... Acra, Acra Crespe? I'm not really sure. Solcofero? Solcofero. I don't even know. I'm not sure what these names mean. Hopefully it's nothing rude. But anyway, we got the Iron Treads coming here. It's going to be a, uh, a Terra Ground. Now, funnily enough, I went for a Horn Leech here. But back to what I was saying before, with the Go Go, it was quite funny because I had Terra Water on this, but that still means Sap Sipper can activate, and it's quite a good way of getting around it. I did a similar thing on my Typhlosion too. Like, I gave that one uh, Terra Water at the same time. So, anyway, I'm going to get some big old damage there on the Iron Treads, and it is going to be rolling right out of this battle. Next Pokemon is the Breloom. Breloom's going to go for a Bullet Seed. So, I guess they didn't realize, even if you go for a Terra Water on a Pokemon with Sap Zipper, it still activates. So that's the end of the Brelin that was very, very salty. Next Pokemon is the Seraled. So, Seraled is going to have the Air Balloon, and uh, I'm going to go for a Horn Leech here. Wait, the Brelin didn't die. I think they swapped it out. Anyway, uh, I'm going to pop that Air Balloon, and now they're going to be swapping out and going into a Mungus. This is a very sus matchup. Now, what I'm going to be doing is going for Horn Leech again, and that's pretty good damage here. I'll take that. So now I'm going to go for the Earthquake there on the Amoongus. It has dropped the Amoongus in one shot, and there it is. There's a salty, beautiful, warm baby bottle, fresh in the morning with a tad of salt there. Hope you enjoy this one. They were very, very salty after all those swaps. I mean, man, how many times did I get my abilities to activate there? <laughs> It's crazy. If you enjoy this, people, make sure you hit the like button. Leave a comment below there. Support the channel and the videos, people. That would be awesome. All right, we've got another battle here. I'm not really sure what my opponent's name is. Maybe someone can translate. Vor's got the awesome people in the comment section to do that. And we've got a Breloom lead here. So uh, Go Goat is going to get a free attack boost. Now, this is almost like Deja Vu here. We've got the Breloom going for Drain Punch. So I thought, you know what? I, I may as well try and get these bulk ups going. That Go Goat sweep was pretty cool. I don't know whether I've done a Go Goat sweep on my channel before. Like, I know that I've done a Go Goat sweep many times, but I don't know if I've actually uploaded one on my channel. So maybe uh, that's something I can look at in the future. I'm, I'm sure that I can get it with this bulk up set. Anyway, so Broly has got a salty swap there, and we've got the Typhlosion coming in. So I've got a lot of bulk ups here, and I'm thinking to myself, I could go for a, a like a Terra here. Now, I could go for Terra Water. And that way, if the Typhlosion goes for, like, you know, Fire Blast, Flame Thrower, you know, anything like that, I'll be able to take that pretty easy because I've got max health and max special defense. So I'm going to be very, very bulky. Oh, it turned out the Typhlosion went for Eruption, which, you know, that would have easily taken out my Go Go. And I take that very, very well, and Typhlosion is going to get dropped. So. This is a very, very good start to the battle there. And I have to admit, you know, Typhlosion's flames, you know, flaring out looks very, very cool. So in comes a very problematic Pokemon, which is Morata. Now, I know what you're thinking. I do have two Pokemon with Lightning Rod and another one with Voltorzor. But, you know, if those Pokemon go, it's going to make things fairly difficult. So we got the opponent going for a little Timmy Terra here. And, of course, it's going to be Morata on. How could it not be? And they're going to have Terra Electric, which I knew they'd probably go for. So... I've got my pin church here. I've got lightning rod. Now, my options here are so I can go for hydro pump. That's going to be my most powerful move to use here. Not that it's probably going to do too much damage. It might do maybe a little bit over a quarter. So we got the Antelion swapping in it. I would have liked to get the Hydro Pump hit there. Might have done a quarter. Now they're going to go for a Snipe Shot from the Antelion. And Thunder from Down Under misses. That was definitely a KO there. So... 
Opponent getting very, very lucky there, avoiding both of those hits. So now going to go to Vaporeon here. It's time for another Water Absorb, but they went for a Blizzard, so maybe they predicted that. And now they're going to follow up with the Sucker Punch, so it's a mix set, which is pretty interesting. And uh, now going to go for the Trailblaze. Trailblaze is going to be super effective. So this set, as you can probably imagine, is all based around flinching the opponent. So Vaporeon really does have the greatest speed in the world, so after a couple of Trailblazers, you're probably able to outspeed most things, but, you know, really speedy Pokemon, yeah, probably not going to happen. Anyway, uh, Intellion's going to go for a U-turn. Intellion's pretty much walled in. There's not really anything it can do. Next Pokemon to swap in is going to be the Breloom from before. I did a swap here. I was like, you know what? I can go into Go-Go, but they may go for Drain Punch, so, you know, I took that risk anyway. So here it comes. Here's the Drain Punch. So, you know, good prediction for my opponents. The only thing I've got to say about this team too, once you trick the opponent enough times, they start cottoning onto what you're doing. And then it can become obvious what you're swapping into. So then you've got to take like mind games around that, maybe a terror here and there too. So it starts off good, but the more you use these sort of teams, the more predictable they do come. So you really have to make those swappings count a lot. So I got a sap sipper there. They went for a spore. And uh, now I'm going to go for a milk drink there. And uh, that's really, really bad there because I got that milk drink up and I pretty much healed myself off there. So it's funny, it's funny how many people try and go for super effective moves once you terror, right? They they seem to think that there's still going to be like, there's going to be no immunity, like even though the ability still remains. So that's a really nice one I like to use there on the go-go. Anyway, so I'm going to go for Earthquake here. Now, I want to say this real quick. This battle was going on for quite a while. Uh, I know that it's you know quite sped up here and all the stuff is chopped out, but I really, really believe here, if I started going for more bulk cups and milk drinks, I think the opponent would have rage quitted or cancelled the battle because I had a lot of cancels with this thing. Because simply because, you know, the opponents would predict wrong or they try to predict right and then they'd end up being like wall by Go Goat or like something like that. So I could have gone a lot harder there with bulk up and milk drink, but I chose not to because people just kept quitting all the time. I'm like seriously anyway so that's the end of go go and that's going to be the end of the uh Brelim. i roast it with the flamethrower oh i didn't explain this typhlosion set it's actually a mix set so i've got white herb as the item flash fire as the ability so flash fire obviously giving you an additional 1.5 damage um from the fire attacks and obviously immunity to fire moves so i've got earthquake flamethrower terror blast water and curse it is a mix set and it is max special attack and max speed naive nature and boosting up that attack so anyway we've got this little battle there between the Inteleon and the Vaporeon I pretty much had this uh, Inteleon beat there and I got myself a couple of speed boosts so I thought you know that Maridon is probably going to come in here now in comes the Maridon and you wouldn't read about it Maridon had a quick claw as the item like out of all the items you could have given a ride on why would you give it a quick claw anyway they're gonna outspeed me and take me out with a parabolic charge <laughs> it's unbelievable i would have got like i reckon i would might have been able to get like a, maybe a flinch against that sort of get some of its health down anyway i'm gonna go into the orthworm here they got another quick claw this was simply bait for Orthworm to swap into another Pokemon being Pinchurchin because I thought, well, I can get a free special attack boost here. I may as well try and do that. Now, I know they've probably got some sort of Dragon type move, but I don't think they really want to use it, you know, because they're probably thinking, well, I don't want to get hit by a boosted special attack move. Sweet Gums King Toilet here. It's got the Supreme Overroll there. It's, you know, it's, it's rolling the Toilet Roll, and, you know, Hydro Pump does a lot of damage. Here comes Kotar Cleave. I live the one health. You wouldn't read about the merchant available, and that is the end of the King Toilet. It is going to be flushed away. How about that one health live, though? That was wild. I had Assault Vest as my item, Max Health and Max Special. That so in comes Walking Meme, and this is going to get a boost there from the uh, Booster Energy. Obviously, I'm not going to outspeed that, and this is a very, very big problem here, because when you look at it now, I had Typhlosion left, and it's like... I can't do a lot of Typhlosion. I mean, I, I, Orzwarm is a difficult swap in here. So I thought, all right, I, I have to get some sort of damage. 
and the damage isn't going to be good either because I know that Flamethrower is probably going to one-shot all of them. So I went into Diplosion and gave myself a free Flash fight. But even then, uh, there wasn't a lot I could do. I was either going to go for an Earthquake, which is going to do nothing, or go for a Flamethrower and try and get a Burn or a Crit. So I ended up going for the Flamethrower. Of course, it did nothing there. It's obviously going to be quad resisted. And yeah, that's going to be the end of Typhosion. There was really nothing I could do there. That was a very, very difficult Pokemon to get rid of. So next Pokemon is going to be the Pachirisu here. And my really only play was to go for the Nuzzle. So I went for Nuzzle. And I was hoping to get the Super Fang Nuzzle combination going here. Uh, this Pachirisu set was uh, Charge Beam, Nuzzle, Sweet Kiss, and Super Fang. <laughs> Bright Powder as the item. And I made it bulky. So max health and max speed. So now I've got the Parafusion on the Walking Mimi, which is good. I may be hoping it hits itself a couple of times. Unfortunately for me, it's going to get another Hydro Stream off here, and Patrice is going to faint. So that was a little bit unlucky there. I, I maybe expected maybe one Paralyzer or a Confusion, but, you know, to no avail. So I've got Orthworm left as my last Pokemon. Things are looking grim here. I'm going to go for Earth Power because I'm Choice Specs. I've got to lock myself in for Maridon. Uh, the uh, Confusion is still happening, and I do not get the Confusion. However, I get a Paralyzed, which is awesome. So I get another Earth Power, and it lives on one health again. I'm like, come on. I just want to finish this thing off, you know. And funny enough here, I get another Paralyzed. So I guess that Pachirisu never got the luck, but Orthorm got the luck, which is really, really cool. So that's the end of Walking Me. There's only one more Pokemon left. And, of course, it's Maride on the Gourmet. So, uh, this Maride, see, I, I, I told you we only had a little bit of time left here. Um, so, this is three minutes to go. Here comes the Electro Drift. They're just going to press A with their forehead. And that is pretty much the end of the battle there. So, they had their Maride on trampoline in the back there to get them the easy win. But I really made them work hard for this battle there. If I could could have somehow have kept my uh, Patrice or Pin Church and alive there, I feel like I would have won that. But... It was a tough battle, you know, there's some scary Pokemon there. Anyway, let's get on to battle number three. I've got no idea who my opponent's name is here. Once again, if anyone wants to translate, that would be awesome. So, of course, we've got a little Timmy Maride on here to start the battle off with. So, I thought they might try that. So, I started with Go-Go. -Go. I was like, all right, you're just going to use an electric-type move here. And uh, they swapped out. So, I was like, hmm, that's very, very interesting. So, in comes Charizard. And, uh, sorry, I went for the bulk up here because I thought I might be able to live this and then go for Earthquake. So, my apologies. So, now I went out to the Go-Go and into the Typhlosion for a free swap in. So, I thought to myself, I might be able to get this rare shiny orange Charizard to... I might be able to drop it with a Terra Water. I tended to go for Terra Water a lot. I don't know, like, Go-Go and Typhlosion... Was sort of like my go-to Pokemon here, you know? Um, I like to run on Typhlosion as well. I like to run Terra Grass. Because <laughs> then the opponent goes for a fire move and you still get a flash fight. Uh, it's very, very nice. So anyway, Charizard's, like, I guess it's base special event saved. So it pops a Hyper Beam. I was like, that's pretty cool. I didn't expect that. Now Charizard is going to get dropped by a uh, Terra Blast Water. So... That is the end of Charizard, the hyper-beaming Charizard. Now, it gets better. Next Pokemon is going to be Maridon. Now, we, I know they're going to go for um, any Electric-type move here. Whether it be, uh, you know, Parabolic Charge or Electro Drift, one of those. So, I went to Pachirisu here. Pachirisu is going to have the Volbsorb. They went for Electro Drift. So, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can go for a Super Fang here. That'd be good. And the Electricity is fierce. And so does the Maridon. So... Oh, am I thinking maybe he does? I don't know. Like, maybe they've got Dragon Pulse or Dragon Water. In comes another Charizard. I was like, what is this? This Charizard, however, is not shiny. It's just the, it's just the usual, typical shiny black one. So we got the Patrus swapping out and Typhlosion coming in here. And they went for Giga Impact Charizard. <laughs> and I managed to live that on 12. So we've had a Hyper Beam Charizard. Now we've had a Giga Impact Charizard on your pit show. So that's going to be the end of the Charizard there. Thank you, Typhlosion. But, uh, you know, I'll give my opponent some props there. Uh, pretty cool using Giga Impact and then Hyper Beam Charizard. So both the Charizards are now gone. They're uh, flapping up the top in the breeze. So we got Maridon slipping in here. And I'm going to be sliding out into the Pachirisu again. I was like, they can go for a Drake or Meter Shore or a Dragon Pulse. That'll be fine. So they went for Thunder this time. I'm like, way. They've got two electric moves. So... They've got Electro Drift and Thunder. I'm like, what else do they have? Parabolic Charge and, I don't know, Thundershock. 
In comes a disgusting pickle Dragonite. I went for the Super Fang there on the swap. Like, okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to swap this out. Like, maybe it's got Earthquake. Maybe it doesn't. Let's go into Typhlosion and see. It's pretty much on its last leg. And Dragonite goes for Hicker Impact. It's like a Giga Impact Hyper Beaming team right now. So that's going to be the end of the Typhlosion then. We're going to go to Pit Church in because... I've got uh, I've got Thunder, so that should be uh, pretty powerful. Thunder's going to miss the first turn. Dragonite's going to go for a Giga Impact again. This is doing some solid damage. They've got some. They've definitely got like max EVs here. I'm going to go for the Thunder from down under, and that is going to be the end of the Dragonite. So the uh, Hyper Beaming uh, Giga Impacting, or oh, sorry, Giga Impacting Dragonite is no more. Next Pokemon is Champau. This is always a very very threatening Pokemon with its ability and speed and attack. Uh, Pinchurchin is going to be fainting there. Not really. I didn't really have a good swapping for that. So I went to off to warm here. I, I, now I know that I can take a Sacred Sword, of course, if it's not a crit. And now I'm going to open up my uh, my nipples and fire a beam out of them. And that is the end of the Xi'an Power. That is a Choice Vex Steel Beam. I know they didn't expect that one. I love using special author of a steel beam. Yeah. It's pretty, it's fun, you know. It's not, obviously it's not broken, but it's a nice little surprise packet. Next Pokemon is going to be Lucario. So it's a shiny one too. So I'm going to outspeed it for some reason. I'm running max speed, but I don't know. So I got a crit there and I boosted my own speed. Like I wonder what Lucario is going to do here. So Lucario is going to go for Aura Sphere. That is going to do nothing to Vaporoid. Now they're going to swap out their Va oh, sorry, their Vaporoid. There are uh, Lakara and going to Marida. I'm like, okay, this this seems familiar like the last battle, you know? So it's going to have that boost there. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get no damage from Waterfall. So I've got two options here. Sorry, I've got one option. I've got Patrus. I'm like, I don't know what they've got to hit with. I want to see their dragon move. Like, what are they going to do here? So then they went for Thunder again. I'm like, okay. So they actually have... I don't think they've got a move to hit pa I, I swear they don't have a move to hit me. So now they're going to go back into the current. Like, okay, I can't lose Patrick's. It's, it's, uh, it's vital that I keep that. So I went for Super Fang, and then I dipped out of the matchup. Like, okay, we'll go into Vapor, and that's, that's going to draw the Mirai down again, I guess. And I can use that Vapor and Patrick's sort of core cool there. So out goes, out goes the Lakara again. Like, they must be sick of this, right? And then I was like, you know what? They're going to go for Electrodite move again. So I'll just swap back in my Patrus after this. I'm slowly peppering this Maridon over and over again. So I swapped out the Vapon and I went back into the little Patrus. And Patrus gets like, I don't know, Volt Absorb number 69 at this point. And the opponent uh, quit the battle. They canceled the battle. They were done with that Petrissu, right? They just, uh, they were like, no, nope, I don't want to battle anymore. So a little bit of fresh salt there. And that is it. So this last battle, this was really funny. So this is a bit of a mean battle, but I want to show you because it was really, really funny. Uh, this is a battle against Prince Vegeta, and we've got a very, very salty battle here. So we got a Forager's Lead, and I've got my Orthworm lead in. Now, my opponent only bought four Pokemon, which I found very, very sus. So I knew they were up to some sort of tricks here, you know? So I went for an Orthworm Terrifier because I thought that's pretty clever um, with its ability. So some people would go for a ground type move since I was a fire type and, you know, the Earth Eater would still activate. So Impenetrable is going to live on its uh, sturdy there. I almost pen it. Oh, I'm not going to say that. Anyway, so that's the end of the uh, that's the end of the uh, Orthworm. I'm going to swap it out and now I'm going to go into the Pit Churchill. So Pit Churchill is going to be facing a Stealth Rock here. So I was like, well, I can go for... Uh, you know, pretty much any move here. So the Aphoratress is going to go for Explosion. Explosion won't take out Pin Churchin, but it's going to do a sizable chunk of damage to a little Pin Churchin. Shot. So that's one Pokemon down. There's only three left. So the next Pokemon here is going to be uh, the Spine Ups. Now, there was one Pokemon on their team I was actually a little bit concerned about because I was looking at the team preview like... I don't know if I can get around that. It sort of depends what the set was. Anyway, back to the battle. So, Spide Ops is going to faint itself. It's going to put the web on the field. So, I, I can see what this. Obviously, I know what they're trying to do here. But uh, I'll let you I'll let you figure it out. So, anyway, they're going to Mento drop my stats, put the web on the field. So, the second so the second last Pokemon is Azumarill. So, like, all right, we'll go to Orthworm here. I can at least go for, like, maybe a uh, Steel Beam here. So I'm going to take some uh, Stealth Buff damage. And, of course, there's Sticky Web on the field as well. The thing is, not that my team was probably going to outspeed this last Pokemon anyway. You know, it's a very speedy Pokemon. So the Azumarill is going to go for a Light Screen and a Parasong combination. It's like, 
Yeah, they're definitely trying to set this last Pokemon up. But what are they going to be doing? So wait for the uh, the Steel Beam there. It's going to do virtually nothing. Now the Azumarill went for Protect. And my Steel Beam is going to hit the Protect. And Orthorm is going to be fainting itself here. So... Orthwarp is out of this battle, and Pidgeotchin has a little bit of health left there. So, I've still got, like, four other, you know, healthy Pokemon. So, we've got one more turn left on the Perishong as well, and I'm going to go into Vaporeon here. So, Vaporeon, I thought would be uh, funny. So, I could go for a Trailblaze here and try and get a Speed Boost. Like, I just hope this doesn't have Sap Zipper. And then it got Sap Zipper. I was like, oh, that's pretty funny considering what team I'm using. It's going to go for Belly Drum. So, Belly Drum is going to be the last move that the Azumarill uh, uses because the next turn is going to be the Perisong. So Perishwong is going to be able to take out the Azumarill here. So it's like, okay, fair enough. They find themselves out on the field. So they got one more Pokemon. So like, mm, I wonder what they're going to do here. So in comes the Jolteon. It's called Little Drummer, and it's going to go for a copycat Belly Drum. I was like, oh, no. So now Jolteon could already outspeed my entire team, right? is now going to have a plus six in attack. So at this stage, any, let, let's be real. I think, I'm trying to think of the weakest physical electric. I think Nuzzle would have taken out Vaporeon there. Um, I managed to get a, uh, a Trailblaze off there, and that's going to do nothing because physical Vaporeon is trash. And that's the end of my Vaporeon, which was to be expected. Now, the next Pokemon is Pear Church. I'm like, I wonder what other moves this actually has. So the Jolteon is going to be Terra. I was like, I wonder what uh, Terra this is going to be, you know. Uh, it's going to be Terra Water. So I'm like, yep, that's going to take out um, a lot of my team. So with the speedy Pokemon, a uh, electric type move and a water type move. So obviously Pinchurchin was already on a very low amount of health there from the explosion from Fortress earlier on. Uh, I'd already lost all to him too. So I had pretty much three Pokemon left here. Um, yeah, a Typhlosion can't do anything because it's, it's obviously going to weak to water. And I'd already terrored my Orthworm earlier on. So that's going to be the end of the Typhlosion. I've got two more Pokemon. So I've got Pachirisu here. I was like, I don't think Pachirisu is really going to live this because it's, it, it doesn't have any good defense at all. So it, it's better specially. So that's going to be the end of Pachirisu here. I've got one more Pokemon left, and that is the Go-Go. So my... Well, all of the moves that's used so far, I'll be able to live, but I'm sure it's got another one. And that is going to be last resort there. That's it. A, a physical belly drum jolty on sweep. Only on Pinot Shell there. A very, very salty. No, that was very, very funny. Hope you enjoyed it, people. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.